Hey everyone, Lewis here with another tutorial and today we're going to talk about one of the first big purchases of any streamer's career and that is buying a capture card. So I just want to preface this that this is more of a general guide for people buying capture cards. Maybe this is the first capture card they're buying and they don't want to buy something that's so expensive that does more than what they need it to do. If you're looking for more technical specs on capture cards like color spaces and frame rates and resolutions that they can take, then there's some videos that I've linked in the description that'll go more in depth into the technical aspects of different capture cards. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the first consideration when you're buying a capture card, and that is what is your budget? If your budget's less than $200, you'll have to buy a USB 2.0 capture card. And these capture cards are great to get started with, but they have some problems that I'll cover later in the video. Now the sweet spot is about $300 to $500. In this range, you can buy a capture card that basically does whatever you want. It can take in all kinds of resolutions for all kinds of frame rates, different kinds of inputs. Basically, you can find the perfect capture card in this price range. Now, when you go 500 plus, that's when you got to buy capture cards for certain situations. Like if you're doing a big live stream production like Evo or something, that's where you buy the capture cards that take in four full HD inputs, all sorts of stuff. But again, about three to $500 is a sweet spot you need for your capture card budget. So now that you have your budget set, you need to think about what kind of input this capture card will take. Now the most common input is going to be HDMI. This is going to be for your video game console, or your camcorder, or maybe you're capturing your computer. And there's lots of very good budget capture cards. The most common ones are from Elgato or Avermedia. Magebot also has a bunch of great capture cards in this price range for one HDMI input. Now the prices tend to go up when you need to capture higher resolutions and higher frame rates. Like if you wanna capture your 144 Hertz, 1440p monitor, you need to buy capture cards that can take both that input and up to that frame rate. So a good example of this is the Elgato 4K capture card. Majewell has their own line of 4K capture cards. And basically you're gonna to need to look at the technical specs and see what kind of inputs and refresh rates it can take in. And there's even more unique ones like VGA or D-Sub, maybe if you're trying to capture from an arcade board that you're gonna need even more unique capture cards that you may have to import from out of the country. So now that you know your input and your budget, you'll have to think about what kind of ports are available on your PC. Now, if you're using a laptop, you probably only have USB 3.0 or USB-C or USB 2.0 ports. And as I mentioned before, these USB 2.0 cards, even though they are low budget, they're a bit difficult to work with. And that's because when they take in a full HD resolution, they actually have to encode the audio and video on the card to be able to send it in a compressed format through the USB 2.0 bandwidth. So that means when you get the video feed on your streaming software, it might be a little bit delayed. That means you gotta delay your webcam and your audio and even maybe your system sound if you're having like a Skype call to be able to sync with these capture cards. And what happens a lot of the time is that the delay isn't always consistent. You know, maybe it's about 500 milliseconds, maybe it goes up to a thousand or even further. And so your audio and your video with your webcam and your microphone slowly drifts out of sync from the video and audio from your gameplay if you're capturing your console or your PC. So that's why USB 2.0 is really hard to work with. Now USB 3.0 doesn't have this problem, but the problem that does occur is if you want to connect multiple capture cards, you run out of what's known as USB 3.0 bandwidth. That means multiple capture cards can't work on the bus because they only have the bandwidth for that one full HD input, especially if you're putting like a 4K input on a USB 3.0 card. So you'll need to make sure if you're using multiple USB 3.0 cards that they're on separate buses. So on laptops, this is pretty easy. You plug one capture card into one side, one capture card into the other. On PCs, you'll probably just wanna look for different ports on the front and back of your PC to make sure you're on separate buses. Now some capture cards can adapt to this. Like for example, the Magewells, if you have to put them on the same bus, they'll actually lower the resolution and the frame rate on the input. That way you'll still get a video feed, whereas other cards maybe just don't work or crash your computer or something worse if they're on the same bus. Now PCIe slots are the most flexible to work with. Now depending on your motherboard, you might have two or three open slots that you can plug capture cards into. And usually these are pretty easy to install. The only thing you need to take into consideration is the type of slot that it is. So you don't wanna put a capture card that needs a PCIe two slot into one that's only a one slot because it won't have the bandwidth to send the video that it needs. So this might be important if you're putting in a capture card that's gonna take in 4K video. Now there is a way to add PCIe slots to laptops. 
but you need to make sure that you have a laptop that has a Thunderbolt port. It can be Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 3 or USB-C as it's otherwise known. Now the way that you do this is that you can connect these enclosures that are connected through Thunderbolt and these enclosures can add PCIe slots. Now there's some that can add up to three slots and you can even daisy chain these. So these are a good way to add capture cards in and it becomes kind of a mobile production studio if you buy a box that can add in multiple capture cards. The Razer Core is a good example of one of these enclosures, but it only has one slot that you can add in. Now with that basic information, you can pretty much find the capture card that you need based on input and your budget. But there's some other things to take in consideration when looking for a capture card. One of the things is ease of use. Now if you're not the most technically savvy person, it might be a bit confusing when you hook up the capture card that you need to install drivers or that you need to select a specific resolution so the capture card can show the video. So if you're looking for a capture card that's very easy to use, like pretty much you plug it in and it just works, I recommend the Magewell capture cards. Their USB 3.0 capture cards for the most part are plug and play, which means you just hook them up and they'll appear in your streaming software and there's no more setup needed or they should install the drivers automatically on their own. And their PCIe cards are also pretty simple too. You just install those, download the driver and they should just work and whatever input that you send it'll automatically detect the resolution and the frame rate and configure it within the card. But if you know your inputs and your resolutions, you might prefer the Blackmagic cards, which are a bit more complex to set up. It just depends on what you're comfortable with and how you like tinkering with software and settings. Now, some capture cards might have some additional features that would be useful to your workflow. For example, if you're playing on a console, you'll need to send the video to a monitor so you can see your gameplay. In that case, you'll need to buy a capture card that has what's known as a video and audio pass-through. You'll see on some capture cards there's an input and an output. Basically, you plug the input in and you'll see it on your streaming software, but that'll have a bit of a delay. And then you send the output on the capture card to your monitor, which won't have a delay because it's a pass-through. Another useful feature on some capture cards is having an additional audio input. This can be a little 3.5 input, it can be a microphone, or it can be audio coming from your mixer. Another useful feature on some capture cards is having video playout outputs. These are additional outputs that you can play out full HD 60 FPS video. This is pretty commonly seen on Blackmagic devices. So in XSplit, you can actually configure a scene and play out that scene through these outputs and it's 1080p 60 FPS video and that way you can offset recording your footage while streaming. So you can set it up on like a Ninja recorder and record it full HD uncompressed video and then also your streaming output at the same time. That way you don't have your computer doing two encoding processes. So speaking of recording, some capture card manufacturers like Elgato actually bundle their own recording software with the capture cards. And this is actually pretty useful because they actually get the raw frame capture from the capture card and you can get a better image quality than maybe using X264 or NVENC. And it allows you to export it into software like Adobe Premiere. So I know that's a lot of information to take in at once and you probably just want the TLDR of what capture card should I get based on what situation you're in. So if you're just capturing your PC or your console gameplay, I recommend getting an Avery Media or Elgato capture card. If you're gonna be capturing like high refresh rate, 4K, 1440p gameplay, you're gonna to need to buy an Elgato 4K capture card or a Magewell 4K capture card. If you're gonna be streaming fighting games, I pretty much always recommend the Magewell capture cards especially the multi-input SDI capture cards or Blackmagic's Extreme Capture Card series. They also have multiple inputs and this is useful because as you grow as a fighting game broadcaster, you're not just gonna have webcams and just getting console gameplay. You're gonna wanna buy higher end camcorders and SDI cameras and making this investment early makes it easier to grow the level of your production for FGC events. So what capture cards do I use and why? Well, I wanted to capture my gaming PC, which has a 1440p, 144Hz monitor. And the best capture card that I could find based on my budget was the Elgato 4K Pro capture card, and it's worked perfectly ever since I've been using it. I also wanted to capture my mirrorless camera, which outputs 1080p, 60fps through HDMI. So what I use for that is an X Capture One, which is a popular capture card from Japan that's actually used for capturing arcade boards a lot of the time. And it's pretty much perfect for my camera. It has an HDMI input. And if I ever want to stream console games like my PS4, 
It has an HDMI pass-through, so I don't need to hook up an extra splitter to get everything working. Now some additional tips I can give you for your capture cards is to always check if there's driver and firmware updates. If you've been having stability issues with your capture cards, usually a firmware or driver update will fix that. And also Windows updates tend to break capture cards. So whenever you see a Windows update, you should always check if there's also a driver or firmware update for your capture card. So make sure to do some research if you're buying USB 3.0 capture cards. Some older capture cards like the Blackmagic shuttles needed specific USB 3.0 controllers to work. And finally, when you start capturing beyond 1080p, 60 FPS, you need to make sure you're buying the right HDMI cables. So if you're trying to capture 1440p, 144Hz, make sure you buy at least HDMI 2.0 cables. So that's your crash course on buying your first capture card. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter. I really enjoy answering your questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find someone who does. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to the channel. Also, I've been streaming on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash offcast, just beat Resident Evil, playing Apex Legends, playing some Vanquish, been having a lot of fun with that. And you can see if I uh, practice what I preach here on this channel. So I just want to give a heads up. I don't know yet when the next tutorial is going to be. Hopefully I figure out a topic soon. But I may be doing an experimentation on the channel. I may see some uh, weird stuff pop up. Some stuff from living in the Philippines. Some just randomness. Um, but the tutorials will come back sooner or later once I think of some new topics. If you have some things you want to learn about, you know, like always, leave them in the comments. But I just want to have some fun and experiment with the channel and the kind of stuff that I'm doing. We're always trying to up the production value. We have some new stuff coming in that I'll be able to try some different things with. So having a lot of fun doing these videos and hope to do more in the future and just create. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone and uh, catch you on the next one. Thank you.